Hello, today I will be showing you guys how to easily calculate your cryptocurrency taxes with Coinly. I will leave timestamps down here. If at any point you get lost or need to revisit a certain part of this video, you can easily navigate to it. We're gonna go from beginning to end, adding your different kinds of digital wallets, calculating your losses and gains with Coinly, and at the end, printing out the necessary tax information. So the first step naturally is to create an account. You can do this with an existing Gmail account or you can do it with a Coinbase account. Um, or if you want, you can create one from scratch. I've already done that. The first screen you'll be greeted with is you know asking for what is your um, country and your currency. So make sure to set that accordingly. Once we have that set up, we're gonna start adding wallets. The main wallets that I use are Coinbase, Coinbase Pro and Binance. So. Uh, let's start with um, Coinbase. So add wallet, add your Coinbase wallet, set up auto sync and continue to Coinbase. This screen, just to let you know, gives uh, Coinly permission to look at the transactions. Coinly is not interested in moving your funds or touching your funds in any way. Uh, we just want to see what the transactions you're making uh, are so we can know what the tax implications are. Okay, once you've added your Coinbase um, wallet, it's gonna take a few minutes to sync. We can add our next wallet. So let's add our Coinbase Pro. So same as before, add wallet, uh, set up auto sync. And this time we're gonna look for the API key, API secret and API pass, which can be found on the Coinbase uh, Pro website. So you're gonna log into Coinbase Pro and in the top right corner, you're gonna click on your username and you're gonna click API. Once you have done that, you're gonna click add new API key and then we're gonna give it a uh, nickname. I've already done this before, so I'll call it Coinly. And here we're gonna grant permissions. Like I said earlier, we're not interested in anything else. Um, and we're gonna copy this passphrase and we're gonna paste it back into the API pass here. And then we're gonna go back here and we're not gonna worry about the whitelist uh, and it's gonna ask for a two-factor authentication. So once we've given that, we have our API secret. We're gonna copy that as well, paste it here into the API secret and we're gonna click done. And now we're gonna copy the API key and paste it back into our API key section. And then we're gonna click secure import. So just a few notes here, make sure you're adding both your Coinbase and your Coinbase Pro. If you add only one of them, and let's say you're making transactions internally, um, you're transferring um, between your Coinbase and your Coinbase Pro and you don't have both wallets, Coinly will not know that these are your wallets, so it won't know that this is a transfer, it won't know uh, whether it's a taxable event, so that's very important. Another way to look at this is, you know, you're giving uh, Coinly the API key, the username, and the API pass, the password, just so we can uh, go into the Coinbase Pro account and see these transactions. Okay, so those two wallets have been added. It's gonna take a few minutes to sync. While it's doing that, let's add our next wallet, which is the Binance one, same as before. And this time we're gonna need the API key and API secret, and I'll show you where to get those on Binance. So on Binance, you're gonna log into your account, and once again, in the top right corner, you're gonna go um, onto your little icon here and click API management. Once you are inside API management, just like before, we're gonna give it some sort of nickname. We'll call it Coinly again. And we're gonna create one of these API keys. This time it'll ask for two different verifications. So once we're done with that, we're gonna take the API key, copy it here into the API key section. We're gonna copy the secret key as well and put it here and do a secure import. So as you can see, our Coinbase Pro wallet is already showing some transactions. Um, while we're waiting for the Binance one, which might take a little bit longer than a few minutes, I'd like to point out that not all transactions on Binance are recorded with the API. So if you go on the actual website and if you go into uh, buy crypto, let's say, for this tab right here, the data is not provided by the Binance API. Some other tabs are the trade convert, which also does not provide data. Okay, so those are the main wallets I deal with. If you wanna add any other wallets, this is the time to do it. The next step is to add our ledger. So we're gonna go into the same place as before, and we're gonna do a similar process as last time. So one small note here is wallets like ledger don't actually uh, have any API keys, but we're gonna still use the auto sync uh, data using public keys. Public keys will allow Coinly to import data directly from the blockchain. Um, so you'll have to enter a public key for each type of coin you're dealing with. For me, it'll be Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, you might have to enter more if you have other cryptos that you're dealing with. So we go into connect blockchain. We're gonna go to Ethereum. Let's give it a name that we're gonna remember. So ledger 
uh, ETH, and we're gonna type in a public key. Yours might be different than mine, and that's okay. So we're gonna copy that, put it in here, import. While that's happening, we're gonna go into Bitcoin, and same thing, let's call it Ledger uh, BTC. And we're going to type in a public key once again. One important note here, sanity check, make sure that your public address uh, for this starts with a XPUB, YPUB, or ZPUB. You can't simply enter a Bitcoin address since Bitcoin wallets create a new address for every transaction. Um, so if you want more information on this kind of stuff, I'll leave a link down below uh, that you can look, look into and read more about. We're going to click import and we're going to go back and see how our wallets are progressing. So Binance is still sinking, but the other wallets are almost ready. After all the wallets have been added and everything is synced, the next step is probably the most important one, which is to review your transactions and make sure you don't have any wallets that you've forgotten to add. A quick way to check if everything was imported correctly is to compare the balances that you see on Coinly with what you actually have on your exchange account. Since all my wallets are imported with the API, Coinly actually does these comparisons automatically. It will show you a yellow icon next to the wallet like I have here with the Binance one. You can click on this icon to see any differences. Minor differences can be safely ignored. We're looking for any large differences that are due to API limitations. You can click on the wallet. You can go on the right side here where the three dots are and click on the trouble, troubleshooting section for some of the most common problems with the API. But normally if there's API issues, you should just upload the CSV file instead of actually going through the API method. Uh, this will usually fix the problem. I will show you guys how to do that later. This is what the troubleshooting page looks like. And um, we're going to talk about that a bit later. So let's go into the transaction section to do some reviews. Looking at the transactions, here's a fantastic example of something you should definitely be looking out for. So we have these massive Bitcoin transfers and we're showing $18,000 in profit. And that's simply because I have not added all my wallets. So once I add all my wallets, uh, Coinly will be smart enough to recognize that this is a internal transfer and there's nothing there's no taxable action going on here. But if you do forget to add a wallet, Coinly will not be able to make that distinction. So it is extremely important for you to add all your wallets. Next, let's look at some Binance futures that uh, have been imported. You can do this by clicking label and clicking realized PNL. So here's one that I did for my account. Um, basically, Coinly will import the actual profit and loss from your future trades. It will also aggregate the PL transactions uh, transactions. So you have um, only a few transactions per day as opposed to potentially hundreds if you're you know trading on Binance regularly. For the sake of this video, I will just also add, uh, I don't want to go too much into detail here. Um, liquidity trading also is supported by Coinly. It's all that data is imported as well. So Coinly supports Uniswap Balancer. Uh, SusiWap, Cream, Value, and almost any other DeFi protocol you can think of. Once we are satisfied with the transactions we've reviewed, let's go into the tax report section. And here we will see now this Binance issue and let's see some ways we can resolve it. Clicking on the Binance page, it will take us back to our troubleshooting. So this is the same window as earlier. And what I'm gonna show you guys is how to go into Binance, how to download this uh, CSV file and how to import it so you can make these, um, you can make that yellow symbol go away and make sure that all your Binance um, transactions have been imported correctly and you know, you'll know you overcome the API limitations. Heading over to Binance, we're gonna go into wallet overview. We're gonna go into transaction history. And then after that, we're gonna generate all statements. Here is where you will generate this file. I've done it before, but no problem. I will do it again. Uh, once this file was generated, it will look something like this. And here we have our full transaction history on Binance. And we can take, th take this file back to Coinly and solve our API limitation issues. So on this page, we're going to go into delete existing transactions. Simply click that. You will confirm. And then on the same page, we're not going anywhere. We're going to click the import transactions um, from file. And we're going to drag and drop the CSV file we just downloaded in here. So this might take a few minutes. That's okay. And let's go see if we still have those issues. 
So as you can see, the little yellow symbol is now gone. We have resolved all our API limitation issues. And then on the tax reports tab, you will get your summary. You should get a little symbol here, a little check mark that says everything looks good. And here you have your summary of transactions, your deposits, withdrawals, trades, gains from futures, income, expenses, and any other useful information uh, that summarizes your year of taxes. And then at the bottom, you can decide exactly which tax report you need to print out. So some forms here that you might be interested in is the IRS uh, report form 8949, Schedule D if you're from the US, or you can you know have the TurboTax online, for, online forms. Um, if you're from the UK, you can print out the HMRC capital gain summary. And if you're from Australia, Canada, Germany, and any other countries, you can print out the complete tax report. And there you have it, a year's worth of headaches solved in under 15 minutes. And the beautiful part about all of this is next time you do this, you don't have to do all these different imports and it's gonna be even a shorter process. And another benefit of this, of course, and there's some cool features, which I'll let you guys explore on the Coinly website is portfolio tracking. So you can monitor and see where you're at throughout the year and see kind of approximately, you know, where your taxes are going to be. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like so other people can see it. And if you want to see similar videos to this one, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace.